Welcome to Adorivit on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show various ways of approaching timing within Harlow 3.3. So we often have cases where we want to delay a little bit in showing some text or running some code, or we want to repeat things based on a certain schedule, or we want to kind of do variations of both of those. There are kind of three general patterns we can use within Harlow using different functionality, and I'm kind of walk through all of them. Let's start with a very common thing. If we just simply want to delay text, there's a macro for that called after. It takes a number and then a set of time, either S for seconds or MS for milliseconds. After that certain amount of time, it will either show the corresponding text in the hook or run the corresponding code within the hook. That's all it does. It's very, very straightforward. So if you ever want to just delay something seconds or milliseconds, perfect. The after macro is for that goal. In fact, if I go ahead and build this from build and play example one, one, two, and then we'll go ahead and show this after two seconds. Very, very straightforward. A perfect example of a macro that serves a really great purpose. Now, alternatively, if we want something to loop multiple times, we can use the live macro. So the live macro will continue to loop based on some time, S for seconds, MS for milliseconds. So if I want something to loop right here for every two seconds, and right here I just have it generating a random number between one to 20, it will sit there and do that. So let's go ahead and look at that here in just a second. Alternatively, we might want to set up if we want to go ahead and use this as kind of an internal counter or internal clock for a passage. So what we could do is set up the live macro to run every one second, then internally use a temporary variable or story-wide variable and count. Every time it ticks, increase that. And then based on some number, we can then show something. So right here, I have an increasing counter by one, starts at zero, every second's going to increase by one, so we're going to know the current seconds. Then over here, I'm using a tag right here for timer. It's gonna say seconds and counter, so we can keep track of seconds increasing. And then if counter is ever greater than five, it's going to tell us that the counter is too high. Now this might be situations where you want to do something after a set amount of time. So if you ever have certain passages or stories where timing is a factor, players or readers are taking too long in a passage, you might want to kind of count five seconds or use either live or after for that purpose. Count five seconds, then send them to another passage or count five seconds and make a decision for them or any other variations of those. So if we go ahead and look at example two, we see right here, every two seconds, including the initial start, we have random numbers. And notice, of course, the counter is too high, but the seconds are ticking on. So if we want to approach where we're either showing something, a delay, and then showing text, the after macro, we want something that's kind of repeating or might be some type of clock, the live macro might be a better choice. So we have after and we have live. Now there might also be cases where we're using the live macro in at some threshold or condition we want it to stop. And there's a special macro for that called stop that's paired with the live macro. So example three here, we're doing the same thing again, except in this case, once we hit a certain threshold internally using an if macro, we stop. So notice right here, it says if counter is greater than four, right here, using the stop macro. We stop what we're doing, it will stop the live thing from running. So if we go ahead and move over to example three, we'll count one, two, three, four, five, stop, right? Five is greater than four, as soon as it hit that number, it stopped what it was doing. So this might be another way to do it. You potentially give a user a certain amount of time or again, some threshold and stop what it's doing. So finally, let's look at one more thing. So we can use the after macro if we want to delay and then show something. We can use the live macro to repeat a certain number of times, seconds, milliseconds. We can use live with stop to stop the macro from running. Now there might be some cases where we want to know how long a passage has been shown starting when whenever the passage was first shown. There's a special keyword for that called a time. And so often what we want things to do is we want things to trigger one after another after another. And we could use kind of exact values. This shows up at one second, this is 1.5, this is 2.5. We would also just add it to whatever the current time was when that passage was first shown. So in this case, I'm saying time plus one second, time plus two seconds, time plus three seconds, 
these will always be chained to each other, which is say we'll do one and then two and then three based on whatever value is in the special keyword time. So in this case, one second, two second, three seconds, time will start at zero as soon as that passage is shown, one, two, and three. So looking at this, we'll move over to example four, start story from here, build and play. One, two, three. So another way to approach timing is using the time keyword. We can also do things with the event macro, for example, and the time keyword, where the event macro after a certain amount of time does something. So we saw with after and live we can do things, we can also do things with the event macro not shown in this video, or working with the time keyword. So in particular, when working with timing in Harlow, the after macro, the live macro, and the time keyword, and these can be used with other macros the stop macro, the if macro, and combinations of all kinds of other macros. But at least as we're dealing with timing, we have after, we have live, and we have time keyword, and these can be used with other macros to do different timing things within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.